Hello everyone, I'm Joe Keller, and welcome to the Mosaic Church of the Nazarene. It is Wednesday, March the 9th, and today, Pastor Jeff is sharing with us from the Word of God titled, Using Money to Make Friends. But first, please join us in some praise and worship music as we glorify the Lord. <laughs> Yeah. 
Hi, thanks for joining us this evening. If you would, turn with me to the book of Luke, and we'll start right at uh, six, uh, chapter 16, verse 1. We'll start right at the beginning. Luke, Luke chapter 16, verse 1. And the title of today's message is, Using money to make friends. Yes, <laughs> isn't that, a, isn't that a, a fun title? May not mean what you think it is. I'm not talking about heading off to the bar and buying everybody drinks. Not that kind of using money to make friends, but you'll see as we get into it a little bit. So let's read from Luke chapter 16, verse 1 through verse 12. This is one of the hardest, I think, one of the hardest and most misunderstood parables of Jesus. Jesus uses parables to, to really convey his word, to convey a story. And then a lot of times the disciples would come after time, you know, afterwards and say, Master, what do you mean by that? We didn't get it. A lot of the people didn't get it. But it was those who really followed Jesus and really wanted to understand what he was saying that came after him and say, hey, what did you mean? What did you mean by that? Let's see what you think about it. In verse 1, he said, he said it also to, also his, to, to his disciples. He was talking with the Pharisees, the disciples. Uh, there was, you know, a few different sorts of people around. He said also to his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. So the steward was like a money manager. So um, the certain rich man had a steward, a money manager, and kind of accused him of wasting, you know, not being faithful with his money. Verse 2, and he called him and he said unto him, what is it that I hear of thee? Give an account for all you've been managing and you may no longer be steward. Man, so he heard something. This is, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a little off, but, you know, this is how we act sometimes. You heard something from what you consider a reliable source, and you act on it without giving the man a chance. But I guess he's going to give him a chance here. But uh, he said, hey, this is what I heard about you. Turn in the books. You're out. You're out. Okay. Verse 3. Then the steward said within himself, he's thinking to himself, gee whiz, what am I going to do now? My Lord taketh away from me the management, the stewardship. I can't dig. You know, it's probably old like I am. I can't dig ditches. I'm too ashamed to beg for money, which I would have a hard time begging for money. So he doesn't know what he's going to do. He's thinking, oh, gee whiz. You know, I mean, when we lose our jobs sometimes or get let go for whatever reason, these are all the thoughts that we have. He said, I'm resolved what to do, which, which means that, okay, he thought of a plan. He decided what to do. That when I'm put out of my job, they may receive me into their houses. Let's see what he means by that. So he called, he was talking about the debtors, you know, the people. Uh, he called every one of his master or his lord's debtors unto him and he said unto the first one how much do you owe my lord how much do you owe the master and the debtor said a hundred measures of oil and the we'll call him the unjust steward or the steward said unto him take your bill I'll tell you what I'll make you a deal this is what I'm supposing. The Bible says, uh, and he said unto him, take your bill and sit down and quickly, right now, got to do the, the one-time offer, this is a one-time offer, right now, write out 50 and I'll cancel your debt. So I would imagine it like this. I tell you what I'm going to do. I tell you what I'm going to do. You owe my master 100. You write me 50 right now, I'll wipe it clean. That's Jeff's paraphrase. It means the same thing. The guy did it. Heck yeah half the money, and he probably, doesn't say this in the Bible, but the steward probably says now, don't forget me, I did you a huge favor cutting your bill in a half, so there may be a time where I need to ask you a favor, 
Is that a deal? Oh, that's a deal. You cut my bill in half. That's a deal. That's what I'm thinking. The conversation was behind the scenes. And then he said to another, the steward went to another one of the debtors, and he said to another, how much do you owe? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And then the steward said to him, take your bill and write 80. Not a hundred. You know, he probably gauged everybody based on who they were, how much they owed. He said, take your bill and write 80 instead. And then, as it comes down to, we're up to verse 8 now, uh, as the Lord of the house, you know, it doesn't say this, but he probably came back and said, look what I've done, look what I've done, I've got, I've got your bills collected, he probably tried maybe to save his job, don't know if it worked or not, it doesn't really say that it worked or not, but 100 measures, um, the Lord commended him, the Lord of the house, um, the boss, commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the, the Lord says, and these are all Jesus' words, the words in red, and the Lord commended the unjust steward, the Lord of the house, the master, the boss, commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Isn't that something? Can you see what's going on? Did you get you get the picture of that? This guy's been cooking the books. You heard that term before? He's been cooking the books, and he got busted. And the boss says, okay, heard you've been cooking the books. want you to get all your stuff in order, turn them into me, and you're out. So the guy still had time. Nobody, the debtors probably didn't know you know, that he's getting ready to get ousted. So he went with them and made a deal and probably told each one, hey, you know, I'm cutting your bill down. You owe me a favor. So that, remember when it said up here, I am, I've decided what to do. When I'm put out of my job, they may receive me into their houses. That's the they he, he was talking about was his master's debtors. He's making some friends with what? Money. Remember the title of our message? Using money to make friends. Making some friends. You owe me. Cut your bill in half. You owe me. We ended up at verse 8. Let's see the rest of the story here. Verse 9, Jesus says, And I say unto you, Make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. You know what mammon is? All throughout the Bible, mammon is referred to money. Make to yourself friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, <coughs> excuse me, that when they fail, they may, or when you fail, when you die, when you pass on, when you no longer cease to exist, that when they fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Let me read that again. I say unto you, Jesus said, make to yourself friends of mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive unto you, uh, you into everlasting habitations. Let me continue on and then we'll back up. Uh, verse 10, he, he that is faithful in much, uh, oh, I'm sorry, he that is faithful in that which is least, let me read this again. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. So if you're going to faith, be faithful in a little bit, you're going to be faithful in a lot, the Lord's saying. And he that is unjust in the least is going to be the same way if you give him a whole bunch of money. Verse 11, If therefore ye have not been faithful in the money, the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And verse 12, if you've not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Now, when we read this parable, and I've done it too. I've done it too for years and years and years. We read the parable, and then we focus as for, okay, what was the message? What was the message behind this parable? We tend to focus on the last two verses because <laughs> those are the easiest to understand. We, we didn't really get the first part, especially that verse 9. 
make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when they when you fail, when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Yeah. The next verse, he that's faithful in that which is least is also faithful in a lot. Hey, that's understandable. So when we read this parable, we tend to understand and gravitate toward the easier things that we can understand, and then we roll on from there. But I decided the biggest message here is in verse 9, and I say unto you, make to yourselves the friends of mammon of unrighteousness. That's what Jesus is calling money. That when you fail, you may receive, they may receive you, they again, we're talking to your friends, may receive you into everlasting habitations. Let me read this in a little bit more understandable version. You know there's different uh, um, translations, not versions, but translations of the Bible. This was the King James that I was reading out. One of the more difficult uh, to understand because written in King James English. Um, I'll read it out of the New International Version or the Nazarene International Version. I remembered that. Luke 16, out of a different version, same words, just said a little bit more plainly. Jesus says, I tell you, use worldly wealth, unrighteous man, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself. There we go back to the title, using money to make friends. Use worldly wealth to, gains, to gain friends for yourselves so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Okay, this clears up a little bit. Make friends for yourself with a worldly wealth. But it still doesn't make sense. How do we use wealth to gain friends for ourselves? Okay, going back to, no, it's not, it's not going to the bar and not buying drinks for anybody. We're going to clear that up. How do we do that? How can these people, let's say that, that was it. Let, let's say we use our money to give people money. You know, it's kind of like, hey, you know, l l let me do this for you. Let me do, but you're going to owe me. Let's say we're, we're the unjust steward. That's not going to be a good thing. How are these people, well, let's say you were to go to the bar and you bought everybody drinks and they, everybody loved you. You made a lot of friends because you bought everybody drinks at the bar. Did you ever figure you'd hear this message in a sermon? I didn't think so. You bought everybody drinks in a bar. How are these people going to welcome you into eternal dwellings? See, what Jesus is telling us here is the unjust steward was considering his life here on the earth. What am I going to do when I'm out of a job? Who's going to take care of me? Jesus is telling us, number one, you should be concerned with what's going to happen when you fail, when you no longer cease to exist, what's going to happen in eternity. That's what the message is really about. Use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself so that when it is gone, you'll be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Now the guys at the bar, if they do get saved, if they're saved, they give their life to Jesus, they repent of their sins, wonderful. They may indeed welcome you into eternal dwellings. But the money that you use, was it, it's not supposed to be meant for that. What this parable is saying in that verse 9, the hardest part of the parable, use your money to gain friends. Use your money to further the gospel so that the friends you make through witnessing, through church, through baptisms, the money that you make will send these people to heaven when they no longer cease to exist. The money that you make will send these people to heaven and those people will welcome you into eternal dwellings. Does that make sense? I hope it does. A little bit, a little bit of sense out of this, all contained in verse 9. So 
Verse 11, if you've not been faithful in, in money, who will commit to you the true riches? That's, that's kind of good in itself, easily understandable and a good message. Uh, verse 12, if you've been faithful in that which is, if you haven't been faithful in that which is another man's, who will give you your own stuff? Very true. These are good money management principles. But the real gold is found in using your wealth to gain friends. Now that doesn't mean, you know, initially I used to think, oh, I'm going to go make, you know, I'm going to go make friends with rich people. That's what the Bible, <laughs> that's what the Bible says. I'm going to make friends with rich people. That's not really the story. But rather what Jesus was saying was use your money to win souls to the kingdom. And it's those friends you make from witnessing and from winning people to God that will be welcoming you. Hey, man, do you remember me? Yeah, we went to church together. You invited me to church, and that day I gave Jesus this, you know, I asked Jesus into my heart, made him my Savior. Do you remember me? You'll have people pointing at you. That This is what I'm imagining. That were your friends here. And there, I still remember my Sunday school teacher um, back when I was yay high, probably 10, 12 years old, at a Baptist church. He took extra time. I was always the kid with questions that I had to stay after class, which was okay because I wanted to know. And he would take the time and stay after with me and open up the Bible and teach me the Word of God, the questions that I had. I remember him to this day. And I don't know if he's still around. The pastor used to pick me up for church. I'm going to thank these guys. I consider them my friends. I'm going to thank these guys when I get up into heaven because they took their time, their resources to spend extra time with me so that I would have an eternal home. Two other quick scriptures. Deuteronomy 8.18 But thou remember the Lord thy God for it is He that giveth thee the power to get wealth. That He may, here's the rest of the story, rest of the verse, that He may establish His covenant, which He sware to His fathers as it is to this day. There's a reason why God gives us money. We're stewards of God's money. He gives it to us that we would help establish His covenant. Not to buy our buddies drinks at the bar so that we can share the gospel with others. And one last verse. Proverbs verse 11, or uh, chapter 11, verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And the one who wins souls is wise. If you put your money, using money to make friends, if you put your money toward making friends to help them see the light of the Lord Jesus, you'll not only secure with them an eternal habitation, an eternal home, but you'll have a friend for life and you'll do that which not only the Lord has commanded you, but that which He considers to be wise. I hope this made sense to you. I hope uh, bringing light to a parable that was maybe sometimes other misunderstood or overlooked because it's a very important lesson. Use your money to make friends, but do it wisely so that these friends will join you and welcome you into heaven. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this message. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for revealing your message to us so that we can understand it and put it into application that it will benefit us and others that we may be a blessing, Lord God, as we go forth and proclaim your word. We thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in to our midweek service. If you've been blessed by today's message, and you are watching us on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and click the notification bell to be notified of our future videos. 
If you'd like to support this ministry with your offerings or donations, please send them to the Mosaic Church in the Nazarene, 8499 North Dort Highway, Mount Morris, Michigan, 48458. Or now you can also show your support through donating at our Patreon page, which is located at patreon.com slash mosaicnaz. Please join us at our next service. We welcome you and your family, and you'll find us right across from the Skateland here on Dort Highway each Sunday morning at 1030. We pray the Lord will bless you so that you then will become a blessing to others.